the great thing about my job where I've been so lucky is not just to see one sport, but to see so many unbelievable moments in the last 25 years. I could choose 50, but just five, London Olympics uh, was an astonishing experience for everybody, um, and particularly for the country, I think the spectators. But to see Mo Farah win two goals, the first goal part of Super Saturday was special, but the second one, that, that um, Mexican wave of noise that went round the stadium. And we've been talking to one of his training partners beforehand who said, look, having run 10,000 meters, you're gonna be really struggling. You're gonna have little micro tears in your legs. You've got to get rid of the lactic acid. The ability to run that well again is going to be very unusual. But the way that he was willed on by the stadium, that extraordinary crescendo of noise. And we all thought as he had been in Daegu the year before that he might get pipped in the last 50 metres. But this time he was so strong to win it against that backdrop. That was an incredible noise. Kevin Peterson's 158 at the Oval. All those years have heard of not winning the Ashes and Peterson's approach to defence was just to take Brett Lee on and hit him further and further and further, I think once towards the gas holder. Um, and you could see away to our left from the commentary box, because we had special dispensation on Five Live to do commentary on it, because Test Match Special obviously was going, but a lot of people didn't have Radio 4 Longwave in their cars, so we were allowed to do ball by ball. And you could see people hanging, literally hanging out of uh, blocks of flats and houses away to our left. Um, and then that, that real tension, oh, if Peterson gets out now, England aren't going to win this. The Australians are going to retain the ashes. And then the sort of afternoon relaxed into sort of elation as, as he hit Lee further and further into the stands. Uh, Tony McCoy winning the Grand National. We used to interview him every Friday night. He used to come on special programmes. We did from the Cavern. And we'd say, you're going to win tomorrow. And he'd be very good about it. But in the end, he said, I can't do this programme anymore because I can't win. It's too much. When he won, it was actually really emotional because we knew what it meant to him. We knew that this horse that actually Martin Pipe had chosen was between two of them, but he went, Martin Pipe said, no, I'm going to flick a coin. And he said, you're going to ride, don't push it. For McCoy to win that day was, was incredibly emotional and a real privilege to, to see one of the greatest sportsmen that this country has ever had winning there. Um, I'd have to go for the first Ryder Cup I did. It's, it's, it's almost the ultimate team event. Even if people aren't interested in golf and they're not interested in stroke play who wins the Open, they always are the Ryder Cup, especially when one team, after two nights, after two days play, comes back on the third morning in the singles. It was the Americans this time in Brookline in 1999. It got a bit nasty, to be quite honest, but I was standing by the 17th when, um, uh, when Justin Leonard hit that ludicrous putt and it went in and all the American wives tottered across the green in their high heels. So that was incredible. And then Istanbul, Liverpool winning on penalties. I remember talking to a colleague at 3 0 down and thinking, this is a bit embarrassing. What are we gonna, how are we going to spin this one? By the time I'd got back to my seat, he was about 10 rows behind me in the second half, it was 3 2. And even then, if you remember, in, in, in extra time, Dudek pulls off the most incredible save from Shevchenko. And when he did that, you just thought, Liverpool somehow are going to win this. Five out of 50 out of 100, which I've been lucky enough to see.